Hey there folks, welcome to Economic Observations. My name is Chris. Today is Wednesday the 29th of December and thank you so much for watching. This video is sponsored by the Tanzania School Foundation, a nonprofit near and dear to my heart. There are links in the description below should you need some fine art for your walls in your home or office. It, all the profits go to support education for the neediest children in the world. Anyway, let's get started. Today, I am going to be a movie critic. I'm going to talk about the movie Don't Look Up, a Netflix film that just came out around Christmas time. We watched it the other night, and I found it truly, truly interesting. The movie is was kind of made with the thought of climate change in mind, um, even though there wasn't, they weren't talking about climate change specifically, but it kind of used the analogy that it was climate change, but it could be substituted for the pandemic and it can also be substituted for the science of the economy. And I will say that economics is a science as well. So the whole time I was watching it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is today. It is just depicts in a satirical manner everything that goes on behind the scenes. So these two PhD professors and a student find out that a three kilometer comet is flying around the, the outer, outer space and it is going to hit Earth in six months. And with this information, narrowed it down and they proved it and they saw it and it is flying at a rate that Earth and humanity have six months until a, a disaster hits. And they go talk to the President of the United States. And the President of the United States, played by Meryl Streep, and she did a great job, um, but she was only concerned about her own reelection. She was concerned about midterms and what, uh, you know, votes and money and anything else that had to do with the power that she held. It was so, the satire was great. It just fits so well because we know that politicians love their power and they will do anything to kind of smooth something over and not bring it to light to make sure that they will continue on doing the job that they want to do and exercise all this power. The one thing I was a little, was a little strange to me was that the president didn't call other world leaders to go out and try and fix this because it was not a United States problem. It was truly a global problem. She kind of didn't want anyone to know anything. At one point, she hires this businessman who makes cell phones and they work with some government people behind the scenes and they find out that this comet has trillions of dollars worth of minerals to help make the cell phones for this businessman who was kind of like a cross between Elon Musk and Zuckerberg or Bezos or somebody. But it was like a get rich, uh, it's all about me. And obviously the president is getting some kind of kickbacks by hiring this guy to be the head of this comet analyst or whatever he was, he was going to head up the division within the federal government to look at this comet, but it was all for his own self-interest. So they were going to deploy all these space things to kind of break up the comet into small pieces and have them land in the backyard of this millionaire, this cell phone guy, so he can use the trillions of dollars of minerals. So he can you know, get more and more cell phones made and become even wealthier. It was ironic in a little, little bit of ways, but it just goes to show you what goes on behind the scenes. It's not about the people and doomsday and the end of life on earth. It was all about money and power. It was a great satire. It was, it was just really, really right on. And then they went and talked to the news and the media didn't want to hear anything about it either. All they cared about was clicks and repost and tweets and talk about the stories that they, that they heard on their show. 
And if it didn't garner interest with the public that was watching, they wanted nothing to do with it. Of course, some people heard about the doomsday prediction and riots ensued and people were acting up and burning cars and smashing windows and stuff. I guess that's what you do. I don't know when you hear of something like that. But it was a, it was perfect with the media too because the young PhD student got no attention at all. She was so concerned and so overwhelmed by what was happening and that the fact that nobody really cared was really astonishing. But that's the media for you. They only tell you what is going to be clickbait. They only say or put on the news what is going to be sensationalized, let's say. And this movie depicted it perfectly because it is what it is. And I don't know, I just, even with, uh, and I just kept thinking, I wasn't thinking of climate change when I watched this movie. I was thinking of the economy because they tell us only what we want to hear. Unemployment is 4%. Everyone is employed and things are great. GDP is up, spending's up 8.5% from 2019 levels. House prices are going up, stock market's going up, everything is great. And that's what they want us to hear. They don't tell us the reality. Now I scratch my head because I wonder why did they put a pause on student loan repayment? What's going on that they know that we don't? If everything is so great, shouldn't they all be able to pay their loans back by now? Hey, listen, you can get a loan for $100,000 to go to college for four years, but you can't get a $10,000 loan to start a business. Something's not right. And then those student loans could be put on pause for a year or two? They know something we don't. It's not as good as they say. Do you know that the average household debt is over $8,000 now for credit cards? And credit cards, you pay 16% interest. People might have paid it off during the pandemic when there was easy money and stimulus and all this other stuff to help you get through. But all that's ending. And what's going to happen in January when they stop this child tax credit that people are getting $300 a month or something. I don't know. I don't have any kids under 18 anymore, but what's going to happen when that ends January 1st? People can barely pay rents. They don't talk about the evictions or the foreclosures or about people not getting by the inflation that is just eating all of their meager wages. They only tell you what they want you to hear because they don't want those riots and they don't want people getting really upset. They want to smooth everything over and make everything rainbows and unicorns. But I'm not convinced that there's rainbows and unicorns on the horizon in 2022. You know, in the 1920s, before the Great Depression, nobody admitted that there was a problem, right? There was cheap money, just like today. Leverage, companies and people were highly leveraged. Everything was great. The stock market was booming. It can't go down. And it did. And history repeats itself. But they'll never tell you that. It'll just happen. And when it happens, it's going to happen fast. I don't know when it's going to happen. I'd love to see what Jerome Powell does in March. Everything is going to be easing. First, it was going to be October, November. Now it's March. Can he do it? Maybe they just kick that can down the road to tell the people that things will go back to normal. And that interest rates will eventually go up and it won't affect the stock market and it won't affect, affect everything else. I can't see how it can't. 
Anyway, this movie, I give it five stars. I'm not a movie critic. I'm just a YouTuber. But I thought it was really interesting. And I bet you would too. And the whole time you're watching it, think about what you hear about the economy. Think about what you hear about anything that has relevance, that's important. And you won't hear the truth. Anyway, that's all I got today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate you. Be kind. Call someone, tell them you love them. And we'll talk again real soon. Have a great day.